I'm Peter Block. With me on my left is Deepak Bhatt from the Brigham and Women's, and we're at the AHA Annual Meeting in Philadelphia 2019 for On the Scene. And this is a wrap-up, which includes probably the blockbuster trial of this meeting, which is the ischemia trial. Uh, it's been going on for low these last 10 years, right, Deepak? <laughs> and everyone has been waiting for the uh, outcome, and finally we now know the answer. The short question that Ischemia asked was, if you have chronic stable angina, should you or should you not have an intervention? And the answer is, as we would expect. Right, Deepak? Right, I think so. And I, you know, I think the interventional community has been bracing for these results for a while, prepping, prophylactically, you know, striking <laughs> and so forth. And some of it's been quite unfair, uh, though interesting and perhaps fun to watch from a distance. But uh, the results are, you know, as expected, no significant reduction in hard events. Uh, so I, I don't know that that's really so surprising. I, I, I think the important message that hopefully the media are able to, to understand is that these aren't patients with ACS. That's the majority of what cath labs in the U.S. are doing these days as far as coronary artery disease. And worldwide, it's the super majority of what they do uh, that is caring for ACS in the cath lab. So it doesn't apply to those patients. And it doesn't apply to the patients. You know, this happened to me just um, uh, last Friday where, you know, there was a patient uh, getting a stress test. Uh, it was very abnormal. And you know, they asked me, can I cat the patient on that Friday? And they said, if you don't cat that patient, we're going to admit him. So it's, that patient wasn't going to get discharged. That patient wasn't going to get randomized right. into ischemia. Uh, and I think it was appropriate to do that patient. Tight lesions, stented it, uh, discharged uh, the next day. So that sort of patient, which for the non-ACS patient, I believe is typical in U.S. cath labs these days, you know, again, wouldn't have been represented in the trial. Bunch of ischemia, a lot of symptoms. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, Deepak, we sound like two interventionists who are trying to defend our <laughs> position, right? But yeah. the fact of the matter is the trial didn't really look at a lot of patients that we see every day. And for, let me give some direct sort of uh, inclusion criteria that I think make an important difference in this trial. Number one, if you had angina that was intolerable, you were actually thrown out of the trial. You couldn't be in the right. trial. Uh, most of the patients had ischemia on, all of them had ischemia of some sort on their scans, but 15% of them did not meet the criteria for appropriate ischemia to get right. into the trial, but they were in the trial. Excuse it a little bit to, toward a negative outcome. And if you had a lot of ischemia and terrible, terrible bad stuff going on, most doctors wouldn't put their patients into the trial. Key and points. so, you know, it's an important thing to look at not just the outcomes, but drilling down to find out who actually got into this trial. That is really the key point, you know, how generalizable are the results. And yeah, I think if you've got really mild symptoms, mild ischemia, even moderate ischemia, but you know, uh, mild symptoms, why would you stent that patient, right? I don't think that's the majority of interventionists in the U.S. doing that anymore. Maybe, you know, pre-courage there was some of that going on. I think there was, but these days really less so. And if I could bring in another trial, the complete trial, uh, that was a trial of ST segment elevation in mind. I don't know if people have made this connection. Maybe other people have, but, but in, in, at least in my mind, I thought this was an important fact. The complete trial revascularized the culprit lesion in STEMI patients. Everybody's doing that. And then randomized to complete or culprit-only revascularization. And in that trial, there was a significant reduction in the composite of death or MI, essentially by fixing stable lesions. Yes, it's someone that came in with plaque rupture. Maybe their plaque in general is a bit more angry. But the benefit was a long-term, late benefit. It wasn't an early benefit. And it's hard benefit. outcomes. And hard outcomes. Right. So I, I was on the DSMB of that trial. So I think that it is proven from that trial that if you have a tight lesion, fixing it in that setting at least prevents myocardial infarction in the long term. Yeah. It also is in a hit ventricle because anybody that got into that trial had to be hit with an ST segment elevation. MI. Right. That may prove to be very much like the old CAS trial from 1979. I mean, it showed that if your ventricle was hit, you didn't do as well. That's so, right. It's an interesting issue that we don't know all the answers to. But my point being that in a high-risk patient no, I get it. with a stable, tight yeah. lesion, I actually think there is probably, benefit. Yeah, probably will be. I'm sure that they will look at the patients that had a lot of ischemia in the ischemia trial, ultimately, and then everyone will say, well, that's just a secondary you know, analysis and is meaningless and so forth. I'm a little depressed, to be candid. <laughs> I think the U uh, NHLBI spent... What can I do spent... to cheer you up? <laughs> You can give me the $20 million that was spent on the trial. How's that? But it was a lot of money spent on a trial, which now 
10 years later, we look back and say, still it wasn't the right trial, right? sort of. Yeah, you know, that's the problem with uh, trials, right? It's tough uh, being a trialist myself. You know, a lot of times people ask by trials, the, the time it's done, you know, what did you really answer? Was it really a relevant question for today? I think it's a challenge uh, among trials and for trialists. But, but for sure, in terms of what this should change in our practice, that's the million dollar question for patients, for cardiologists, for family practitioners, internists. What do you think the bottom line is? I, should anyone yeah. do anything different yeah. after this trial? I or think not? the bottom line is if you have the clinical judgment that your patient is in trouble, has a lot of angina, and you have you see a lot of ischemia on a scan and you say to the patient, I think the chances are pretty good that you're gonna have an infarct or something bad happening to you. are gonna stunt that patient. It's, yeah, you that's are. the way it works. That's what we do today and I think that's what we're gonna to do tomorrow. Yeah, I agree with you. And you know, I think there's, there's a little risk. I'm glad you made the message or, or, or relayed the message in that way because the COURAGE trial, another excellent uh, trial, well done. You know, there were folks after the COURAGE trial just saying, oh, I'm not gonna cath these patients that are having bad angina because mm -hmm. COURAGE was quote unquote negative. So sort of a misrepresentation and extrapolation of the trials that, that I'm afraid could happen here too. Yeah. Well, I think for all the cardiologists and interventionists or whatever taking care of patients out there, which is the bottom line here, which is what this trial wanted to figure out, be careful about overextending what this trial will tell, has tried to tell you. And uh, remember that it's patients who were, quote unquote, relatively low risk. Right. And for the low risk patients, they do pretty well yeah, with medical no, therapy. Absolutely, I mean, lifestyle intervention and medical therapy work. You know, yeah. it's not an either or. Yeah. Really, intervention, whether it's percutaneous or surgical, should be reserved for high risk patients, patients having lots of symptoms. We're going to hear a lot about this in the press. We're going to hear a lot about <laughs> it will. talking to our colleagues. Uh, keep all those issues in mind.